Hi, uh, my name's Tony King. I'm Senior Conservator at Essex Record Office. Um, I've been asked to speak a bit about um, our Lidamore boxes, which we've had in use for a couple of years now, and also introduce um, our medieval deed folders, which is something we've just developed. And um, we're still fine-tuning, so I'd be interested to hear anyone's opinions or comments on those later on. Um, so I'll just say a few words about Essex Record Office. Um, we're based in Chelmsford, in Essex, and um, we hold documents, images, sound and video recordings, um, which together tell the story of almost a thousand years of Essex history. Um, as well as seeking to preserve these records, uh, we make them accessible to the public um, via our search room, um, or increasingly via um, digitised images on our website. Um, we were established in 1938, and we hold almost eight miles of records. A number of years ago, um, staff at ERO decided to rethink the way we were using boxes to store the collection. Uh, having collected material for nearly 75 years, um, we had quite a wide variety of box types, um, different shapes and sizes, and as well as different construction materials. Um, a lot of the boxes were large coffin-type boxes, um, which are very large, um, have kind of a maximum internal volume. Um, which were probably very well suited to the early days of the record office, where we had a lot of material coming in in a short space of time. And um, I can imagine that being quite short-staffed in the early days, um, a lot of stuff was coming in, getting boxed quite quickly and put on shelves. So it's probably quite an efficient design for, for back then. But today, when it comes to handling um, full boxes like this and producing individual documents from them, um, they're a real problem. Um, they either tended to be filled to capacity to make best use of space, but if that happens, they get very heavy. Um, the other option was to leave a big gap in them, um, leave them an empty space to save weight. But then uh, it's inefficient, and you get a problem of, um, sort of unequally distributed weight in a long box, which causes its own hazards for staff taking them from shelves. Here we have uh, a coffin box, another one. Um, this isn't just heavy, it's very heavy. Uh, <laughs> And really, its ability to hold such a large number of documents has made it a bit of a hazard to, um, to staff. Um, these can even hold a couple of large volumes, so the weight of these can be quite extreme, really. Um, also, the items within these boxes are also at risk. Um, having so many documents or bundles um, in these large boxes uh, poses a risk of them uh, being crushed or abraded as they get moved around. And if you're producing a single item from a box like this, you have to route through all the other documents in order to find the right one. And over the years, that poses quite a lot of extra unnecessary handling. Also, it's slow as well to go through so many documents. Uh, other older style boxes um, were also causing problems. Um, some of the boards were showing signs of acidic degradation. We had discoloration. Um, and also, a lot was splitting. See, there's parcel tape on these where corners are split. And, in tape back up, uh, which were quite a common sight in the archive. Um, this photo also shows how inefficient it was having different size boxes on the same shelf. You see there's big gaps, uh, unused space, and I'm sure, as with most places, space is really at a premium with us. So we wanted to rethink the way we're storing our records like this. This also demonstrates the opportunity for poor stacking of boxes with a big one on top of a small one. So, um, specifications for new boxes, um, we decided to explore a new design of box um, that would store the collection in a much more space efficient way, uh, as well as promote good handling for the records and for the staff who had to use them. Um, first of all, making all the boxes to a standard footprint um, would mean that three boxes could be placed very efficiently on one shelf with only a little gap between them for easy access. And um, being a standard size, we'd avoid the problem of um, small boxes stacked on large boxes. And it also dispersed the, the weight very efficiently throughout the stack. Uh, we chose uh, 405 by 300 millimeters as suitable for our shelving. But the main um, change was to lower the internal volume. Having a smaller internal volume uh, meant that the weight of each full box is reduced, uh, avoiding the situation of a, a large box um, being a bit of a hazard. Um, and also, having a smaller, um, shorter box meant that uh, the problem of unequally distributed weight could be avoided to some extent. Uh, we chose a range of depths, uh, 60 millimetres being our shallowest, and uh, 120 millimetres being our most commonly used larger box. Uh, these are relatively shallow, um, but 
they work pretty well. Um, the quality of materials almost goes without saying that um, the, uh, the board used for the construction had to meet um, standards such as PD5454, uh, which states uh, board used for packaging paper, parchment and books should have a pH of between 6 and 9 and be lignin and sulfur free. Also, construction needed to be robust enough to, uh, to uh, last for a good few years of regular handling. The new boxes were developed in conjunction with Conservation by Design, who suggested the use of their ecofant recycled acid-free board in the construction. Uh, they also suggested they be made flat pack, so staff at the record office make them up as and when they're required. Uh, here's the specifications for the uh, recycled box board, um, pH of between 7 and 7.5, acid-free, lignin-free, and also passing the photographic activity test mean that uh, it's very good for storing mixed archival collection. We could easily have photographic material in with more traditional materials. So that's not a problem, really. So after trialling the prototype boxes, um, this design has been adopted as our standard archival box. Um, it's been named the Lidamore box after one of our early conservators. And new accessions are ho housed in these boxes, and there's also a programme of reboxing uh, the things you saw earlier on in uh, large boxes or unsuitable older boxes. Uh, this is a, a uh, stack of boxes waiting to be used at the record office. Um, one of the major advantages of the flat pack design uh, is the fact that we can store so many in relation to traditional uh, wire stitched or stapled boxes. Uh, there's about a thousand boxes in that photo waiting to be used and we could never store that number of boxes if they weren't flat. There's also a bit of a saving on transportation. Um, you can see you get a lot on one pallet, so that's also quite a, a good way of um, saving a little bit of money. Right, these are all the bits you need to make a Lidamore box. Uh, we have a base here. This one is actually the 90 millimeter, the, uh, sorry, this, yeah, the 90 millimeter, the middle of our range, and it's got a drop front, which is this bit here. We have a base, a lid, this liner, which was introduced to give a smoother inside to the box. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Here's the base folded up, and these are the tabs that lock into place. Then this picture shows the base with the liner. It's held by these plastic washers, which just uh, plastic uh, rivets, which just push together. Um, so it gives a much smoother uh, inside to the box. <coughs> the lid, very simple, uh, four corners fold up, and an optional tag, which helps with moving the box around, taking the lid off, that sort of thing. And one finished box. Um, the box is actually here. You can come and have a look at it later on. You may well use these style of boxes, uh, but feel free to take a look. This is a uh, row of shelving full of the new style boxes. Um, hopefully you can see what an efficient use of space it is compared to the old system. Each box it can, can be safely filled to almost full capacity for handling and for the document's sake, um, but there's very little space left between the boxes on the shelves. So by filling the boxes fully and filling the volume available on the shelving, uh, we like to think we're making great use of our, our space. So it's been much more efficient in terms of storage space um, and staff time sorting through boxes. Having more smaller boxes does make production easier, uh, less wear and tear on documents being unnecessarily rifled through. Um, and uh, yeah, so doing a better job of handling, of uh, protecting the documents and they're nicer for staff handling them. Okay, I'm going to move on now to the medieval deed folders we've developed. Um, at ERO, we've been puzzling over what to do about these sort of documents. Um, we have a very large number of um, mostly small documents with pendant seals attached. Often these are medieval parchment documents, and they can have multiple beeswax seals in some cases, um, which are threaded through the, the bottom fold of the document, uh, attached by a little parchment tag, um, and they're quite vulnerable. Uh, sadly, this is quite a common sight at the record office, and I expect at other archives and record offices as well. Um, bundle like this, obviously they've got practically no protection uh, for the seals or the parchment. Uh, they're not easy to produce or consult. You'd have to, again, go through this entire bundle to find the one you're after. And often at the bottom of a box that's had bundles like this in it, um, you will find fragments of seals. So it's pretty obvious that there's damage happening here. So they are a bit of a problem. Um, there have been a few attempts to store them better over the years. Um, a simple method uh, was just to sandwich the bundle between two bits of millboard, which, although 
it offered a bit more protection. It took the pressure of tying tape off the edges and things. Uh, it didn't really do much to help them. Uh, this is a, an attempt um, made at some point. I'm not sure when. Uh, essentially, it's uh, a box with, it's got two card runners glued along the top edge. And then the documents are held um, in little plastic sleeves with a hanging bar along the top. So plastic sleeve, document, and the hanging bar, which hangs along the top of the box. A bit like a filing cabinet type arrangement. Um, probably a step up from how they were, but uh, they still cause quite major problems. Uh, they don't really work. If you open up one of these boxes, you'll find uh, normally about half of them have fallen off their runners and are crumpled in the bottom of the box. So um, it's a bit of an issue. The other problem, it was the use of double-sided adhesive tape in the construction of these. Um, you can see the sleeve here is held all the way along the top on both sides with tape. Um, there's tape that's been put at the edges of the sleeves to stop it gaping open. And the documents are held with plastic strips, again with tying tape, uh, not tying tape, uh, double-sided tape, uh, and also one over the seal. Uh, what's happened is the tape has become tacky, and in some places, like here, the document is in contact with the tacky tape, um, which is obviously going to cause uh, potential chemical damage, um, discoloration, and um, perhaps skinning of the document if someone tries to pull it out of there. Um, so this is a, re a real problem. Um, you can see also how the whole document shifts over to one side, and it's actually hanging out of this folder. The seal has been uh, kept where it is by its um, bit of plastic there, but that's probably been quite a lot of strain on this area. So this is a very typical example from this, um, this style of boxing. And we have probably many hundreds, if not thousands, like this. Um, another example here, this document was too big for the sleeve, but unperturbed, they uh, carried on and just folded it up with a couple of poppers there, so you can open the sleeve up and unfold the document. Um, so all things considered, this isn't really a suitable way of storing the documents. Uh, and uh, these are a bit of a priority to restore in some manner. So thinking about the packaging solution for this, um, we had to achieve certain things. The parchment portion of each document needed to be kept uh, supported and flat. Um, all the documents had been flattened out at some point, so we needed to encourage them to stay like that, either through some kind of light pressure or some other type of restraint. Um, supporting the seals and the point at which the seals are attached to the documents is a major consideration. Um, if the documents were hung vertically, um, they'd, they would need some kind of support for the seal. The previous packaging used strips of plastic um, and occasionally little acrylic rings around the seals as well to stop crushing. Um, the major complication was the fact that we need, needed an inexpensive sorry, solution, um, one that was quite quick to implement. Um, we couldn't afford to spend a huge number of man hours making custom folders. Um, you know, we're aware there's lots of different ways of packaging up these type of documents. Uh, cutting recesses in plastic oak foam, uh, making seal bags, that sort of thing, uh, provide excellent protection. But if we're talking about thousands of documents, we just don't have the resources for that. And also, I should go without saying that any solution had to be compatible with uh, conservation aims of um, protection. So the material had to be uh, conservation grade and uh, not do any, any harm. These are some... Um, other examples of how to store pendant seals. Um, all of them do an excellent job. We've got um, lots of foam in use, custom-made enclosures, um, sort of mount board folders, that sort of thing. Um, all great, but all done by professional conservators and all requiring um, a lot of skill and time and, and materials. So not really suitable for us. Um, also, the other problem is uh, with custom-made enclosures, you end up with custom-shaped boxes and folders, which again pose a storage issue. So this is what we came up with. It looks very simple. Um, the document is um, restrained to a, a piece of box board. So there's two thin strips of uh, polyester or polypropylene, um, which go through the back of this piece of box board and are stuck on the back to restrain the document open. Um, the sheet of box board is cut to exactly the same size as this manila four flap folder. Um, but what makes this different from any other folder is the fact that the walls are not of an equal height. They're wedge shaped. 
Okay, this slide shows it a bit better. So you can see at the bottom edge, um, they're about 15 millimeters high, and then they slope away to nothing at the top. Um, what happens here is when the fold is closed, you get a void along the bottom, which will accommodate the seal. For that reason, it's important that the document's restrained in the correct position because the gap's at the bottom, so there's no point of the seal being at the top or moving around, um, particularly if the document's been handled and move around. Uh, this has been nicknamed the Harris folder after our senior archive assistant, Graham Harris, who first proposed a wedge-shaped folder for this. Uh, here's a view of it closed. You can see the wedge shape quite obviously here. Um, clearly, this offers nowhere near the level of protection of custom-made enclosures we saw earlier. Um, plasters out, uh, so, uh, surrounds, seal bags, and boxes are fantastic for this sort of thing. Uh, they protect against crushing, physical damage, abrasion. Here is a box full of them. Now, I actually think there's too many in this box. Um, but um, this is... This solution requires um, a Lidamore box to work, really. The folders on their own offer very little protection from crushing. But when placed in a box, um, the box is providing the majority of the protection from pressure from above. The folders are stacked in uh, alternate facing directions. So when they're stacked up, they make a square. And, and because the document can't move on the box board, the box board can't move in the folder, and the folders fit the boxes really nicely, there should be a real minimum of moving, jostling around during production. So, evaluating them. Um, the advantages are, uh, document is attached to a rigid board, um, so it doesn't slide around, getting abraded. Uh, the document is held open. It's reducing mechanical damage that could occur from it being unfolded and folded up each time someone wants to look at it. And actually, the researcher doesn't need to handle the document at all, because they can just use the box board to manipulate it. Um, we've avoided encapsulation, um, so we've got none of the issues of airflow around the document, um, issues of microclimate, of water getting trapped after flooding, or um, static on parchment documents, which is best avoided. Um, and also the removal of the old packaging system, the old plastic, um, which I tested, it actually appeared to be polyester. Um, through polarizing filters, it did appear to be polyester. But it was very um, opaque. Uh, I've got some I'll pass around as well. It got milky over time. Or it was never very clear in the first place. Um, I mean, there are disadvantages with this. Um, particularly once this folder comes out of the box, it's lost the majority of its protective qualities. Um, it does require an outer box to work. Um, for that reason, you can't really put one of these documents in its folder in a box with other archival material because it probably won't offer it enough protection. Um, access to the, uh, the verso of each document is restricted. Um, being held on a piece of board does stop that. Normally, it's not such a problem, um, because uh, the vast majority of the information is visible when it's on its board. There may be um, small numbering information, that sort of thing, that could be copied onto the surrounding board, or a photograph taken if it was particularly important. But in this case, um, it seems to be acceptable. The document can be easily removed by sliding it out of the strips if required, but um, that's not really desirable. So making these folders, um, originally we made these by hand, and um, the depth of each wedge differed for the depth of each seal we had to accommodate, um, which worked well, but um, even if you're using a template, uh, a member of staff would be lucky to do about two an hour of these folders. Um, so we had an, an initial batch of 1,000 made by Conservation by Design, and we're working our way through them and assessing them at the moment. But uh, they seem to be working really well. The four flat folders come uh, pre-cut and creased, and the box board is pre-cut as well. So literally all our staff do is mark where to cut the slots for the plastic strips, um, put the strips in place, and put the document in, and just fold up the folder. So really, the... Uh, It'll take a maximum of 10 minutes, really maximum, for each document. And the cost of packaging these is about £1.50 per document. Yes, but we are still trialling these and trying to work out the creases. So, yeah, they may look, may look different next year. <laughs> okay. I'll leave the Lidmore box and some more folders up here. Um, so do feel free to have a look. Let me know what you think. <laughs>